So COVID happens and, and now we're just at home. We're trying everything. And this is the first time ever since I finished high school that I'm with my family. Prolonged. Because you see, I say that I'm in school or in church. So I'm, I used to enter home like very like 8 p.m. And you're just coming to eat, sleep. Now this is the first time in your life you're sitting down with your dad for like a whole day. And 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 the far or my, my brothers or my sisters. So the first like few months were, were very difficult. Because just learning how to relate. Secondly, learning how to relate even in in that COVID, because you, you you can't go to church. And as I mentioned, I've been going to church every single time. I can't go to church. I'm, I'm live streaming. Live streaming was difficult for me. I think at some point at COVID, I asked Kina just if I can come to help, just to like be somewhere. And 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 the COVID experience now changed. Now I started. People are dying now in COVID. So COVID 2020. July, around, so that March was when everything was ch- shut. So April, so around end of April, my, my brother gets sick. So he's complaining about headaches. Nini, nini. And then my dad didn't have a job at all. So like who are really, really struggling financially. Mm-hmm. So so I, I remember I used to buy this, this, this bread. I don't know what brand it is called, but it's a 400 gram bread. But it's long, so it looks like an 800 gram bread. But it's just 400, but has many slices. And it used to be seven people in our house. So that's that's 400 gram bread. You take three slices, and those three slices should keep you until you take supper, because money was very scarce, mm-hmm. and 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 COVID was hard in terms of financial. Mm-hmm. Um, then my brother is sick, so we can't like take him to hospital because. I think we don't have money, but also there's that fear, like what if we go in there, it's like COVID, COVID. then all of us are, mm-hmm. we're in a small house, how are we going to, to, to Nini? But also, maybe to go back a bit, um, my dad hadn't gotten a contract since 2017. So 2018, we were kicked out of, our, of the house. Like, um, I, I tell people we lived in this house so much that even now when I have a dream about our house, that's the first, that's the place. Um, mm-hmm. So we were kicked out, we moved to another house. Uh, after some few months, now into 2019, 2019, I think beginning we were kicked out again because we couldn't pay rent. Another house we were kicked out again until now where we, my, they stay now. So it was, it was now an experience of not the journey, not, the journey of experiencing like i wouldn't want to call it poverty but what lucky luck looks like Mm -hmm. so it started then but you see you can't experience it fully because you're not as you're not daily in your house as much so perhaps you might have eaten outside or like if you come and there's no food you just like sleep it's not an experience when you're together with people for a whole day and there's no food so now what COVID did was like, you know, when you suffer together, there's like a bond you, mm-hmm. you create with your family. So like that bond had started from like, tunnel, we, we get each other at a different capacity because we've gone through the trenches together. So my brother gets sick, he's complaining about headaches, he can't sleep well at night. And so we, we take him to like clinics and they're like, it's, they do tests for ulcers. You say like you have ulcers, he's given meds, nothing is changing. Um, so around, I think, June, July, I'm not sure which month, uh, I think it's July, uh, he was on painkillers and, and, and he was okay for like a week. Like, oh, we're like, ah, oh, finally, he's, he's okay. So during COVID, we used to run like a, like a, let me say a Bible exposition program. We, me and some couple of friends of mine had gone to a conference and were like, this would be nice to replicate. So we used to meet every like Wednesday, was it every Wednesday or like two Wednesdays a week, a month, to just go through materials we are preparing. And you see, cause now money was scarce, so you don't have money for bundles. So there's a, there's a bank, KCB bank offers free Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So used to just go there to KCB bank, do the whole session, then I go back, back home. 
So my dad and my brother, because now my brother's like, this headache is too much. So my dad and brother and mom had left to now go to Hosi and that's like a proper hospital. So St. Mary's in Langata. So I've gone, I've gone there. So I'm feeling like a very weird feeling. I'm like, hey, these guys went so early. Why are they are not back yet? So I just tell these guys, hey guys, let me let me go back to ho- to the house and check if like anything's wrong. So I call my dad. I'm like, hey, what's up? And it's like, hey, everything is okay. I've never see, felt my dad so calm. He was very calm in answering me. So like in hope, I'm like something is not okay. But in hope, I'm like, hopefully, I'll let it be that he's been admitted to hospital. So I remember I cooked that day. Now I'm waiting. So they left at eight. I cooked at like twelve. One reaches, two reaches, they're not in. So at around three, my mom enters and now she's just shouting. Uh, my brother had passed. And and I think, you know, death is different when it's so close home. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd lost my f- friend previously uh, to suicide, but in 2017. But now this is someone you have seen grow, you have been with all, all their life, uh, who perhaps like had aspirations of a future that you didn't know of. So, so it, it, it really hits very differently in terms of just, we won't see this person anymore. And, and, and I think that was, it was a pain that I don't think I could ever define. Mm-hmm. Uh, but secondly, at that particular time also, uh, uh, I was in a car relationship that didn't work, and me and my, I, I really wanted it to work. So I was struggling with the idea that this is not going to work, then now your brother has passed. Okay. So like just a, a, a season of just immense difficulty. Mm-hmm. Um, but an interesting thing that happened in, then is, for the first time in my life, I saw like God's love. Mm-hmm. I experienced God's love through his people in terms of the people who came to visit, they're, they're just checking up on me consistently. But there's, there, there's a gap that, that felt. I think my experience of death was, it felt so unbelievable. So there are just still thoughts in my head. Maybe like he'll show up someday. Maybe it's not, it's not it. And, and I think that was now the beginning of a, of a journey of like emotional suffering that I don't think I've ever felt. So now uh, we bury him. Now we're trying just to figure out how life looks like after. 2021 now comes. Now 2021 was now everything. There's a movie called Everything Everywhere All at Once. So you are back to life in general. You're trying to finish school. Uh, You're trying to show your parents that by the way, this psychology I'm not doing. I'm going to finish school, but I'm not going to pursue a career in psychology. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out, yes, God has called me. But where has he called me, uh, and 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 what what does that look like? Because by then Bapu was not taking interns, yeah. so so I'm like I would really really want to work for Bapu because it's my home church. But if they don't take me, I know God has called me to to full time ministry. I'll work there, and I really struggled in in 2021. Um, so it was it was. It was basically a day at a, at a time because I remember I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't have a job, so I needed to be in school, but also I needed to be at work. So I needed to find a way to operate there. And my parents were like, "You didn't graduate when you were supposed to graduate, so we are not uh, financing this part. So figure yourself out." Uh, so I remember I used to sing for the Thursday prayer service team, and they used to give us like three hundred bucks for for fair in the night. So that 300 bob was the one that would, would last me. Yeah, so okay. Friday I go to KU uh, and to going to KU was like, how much? So 50 bob to town, 50 bob to KU. Then I used to walk from KU to Gidu, right? Take a mat for 20 bob, then go to railways, take a mat for 30 bob. So I use like 150, then the remaining 150 is the one that I'm gonna survive with for, for the day. So I used to work, I used to work in Kabiria. So the, the transport there was, it's like 30 bob from junction to go, 30 bob to come. Mm-hmm. So I used to walk to junction, take a mat for 30 bob, 
then I nini. So I remember the day I was so broke, I like walked to Kabiria. I walked to Kabiria. Uh, what were you doing in Kabiria? Uh, so I, so my practice, I had to redo my practice, mm-hmm. my practice. Mm-hmm. So I used to work in a hospital as a mm-hmm. intern psychologist, uh, just to redo it. Um, mm-hmm. So it was, it was a heavy season. Uh, I remember what kept me going is during lunch, lunch time, I used to eat my lunch very quickly. Then I just take my earphones and take like a 30 minute walk, just talking to myself and God. And I was telling God, hey, what is this life? Where is this life? Life going to? Um, um, so it, it was such a heavy, heavy season of my life. In, and I think 2021 was now a revelation for like, I need to figure out life without my brother now, because he's not there anymore. But now 2021, now two things happen. A friend of mine passes on because of suicide. Then my dad gets ill again. So now on top of everything, there are like these two things that need uh, to be addressed. I don't cry very, very often. Like it's not like the meaning. But I remember one day we were at the eat service and we just sang, you know, sat down. And I remember Pastor Mokaya asked like, if you have anyone you've lost, stand up. So I stood up, stood up for my friend. Then the next Sunday he says, if you have anyone who's sick or lost, stand up. Then I stood up. And I remember that day I felt like, hey, God, when am I? When I'm going to be standing up every single time. And, and I remember just tears filling my eyes. And I cried. I cried for like 10 minutes. I was like, why am I even crying? So like 2021 felt like a very heavy season, but, but also felt like a season of freedom for me. Uh, so I mentioned that there's this relationship like I really, really wanted to work. 2021 was the year for like God telling me this is not going to work. Stop, stop pushing. Mm. Um, but also God was was just helping me see him in my suffering. Because mm. you see up to there, my faith was just faithful. Like you pray for provision, you pray for need. It was never like in actual pain or things you can't do anything about. You can't bring your your friend back to life. So there's nothing you can do about that. So there's a there's a faith you need to have in trusting that God will sustain you in this season of your suffering, even when you can't do anything about it. Because you see other like finances, if you don't have finances, perhaps you can call someone. Uh, but even calling. So I, I remember one when we buried my brother, we came back that that the next day. And, and there's this friend of mine who used, I used to talk to a lot. And I think they used to talk to me because they pitied like, mm, what was happening. And I remember I called them uh, that day. They didn't pick up and they never called back. Mm. And, and I think I remember sleeping. And one of the questions that came to my mind is, where are your gods? Like small g. Like, where are they? Like, now they are not here. You call them, they didn't, they didn't pick. And, and, and those particular situations were like a show of, like only God knows how to minister to you in this situation. And, 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 and it's, it's like, a, I think as a lesson I'm still learning up to now, to trust in God to that extent, to trust, to trust in whatever he's doing, uh, especially in the places where I can't do anything about. And, and that was like what 2021 offered for me. So by the time 2021 was ending, like I felt my faith has, had changed completely. Uh, my trust in God had changed completely, and 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 I was very convicted. Either I was going to be a missionary, <laughs> or I was going to do pastoral work. I didn't know anything about like coming to Babo. So the intention was my thought. Also, I think because I was in a very sad season, the first thought was like, I want to go to a mission to be a missionary because at least there you're always running for your life. You can't think about what you're feeling. Um, but 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 uh, I think I was having conversations with Pastor Mokaya and, and I felt like this is the direction. Maybe uh, mm. before we talk about how you got to Baptist, mm. the, during that suffering, mm. you said you, the, you saw God's love through people. Mm. Uh, maybe you can share a little bit about that in mm. the sense of maybe for the people and uh, how you, what you mean by mm. you experiencing God's love. Mm. Because... It's a very tar- what you shared uh, it's, uh, for me. Uh, first, I'm wondering because I used to know you at that time. Mm. It was not evident mm. that mm. you're going through all this. Mm. Mm. So, how were you able to remain? Mm. Uh, maybe 
not break down mm. and also about God's love mm. through the faith. Mm. I think one of the the beliefs I have uh, you know the way there's this this time in I think in John where Jesus is talking to his disciples and they're like he he's talking to a massive crowd and He's telling them about like very heavy teachings like eat my blood drink my uh, no drink my blood eat my flesh then these guys all of them go and then he asked the disciples will you two also leave then the disciples are like where will we go because your words uh, have eternal life mm-hmm. and and i think growing in my faith i've come to a, a point of of believing like there's no way i can go mm-hmm. like it's it's jesus or nothing mm-hmm. uh, because i think i've seen i've seen enough to believe that uh the way like 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 job would say like i've just ha- i've i've been hearing of you but now i've seen you i think at that particular time i was reading a lot of 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 job and and one thing that kept me was that belief for there's no way else to go uh this has like you know the way you say like this has to work like yeah. it can't it can't fail I remember when I, I used to be like uh, back when I was in uni, uh, one of the, the 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 questions were usually like, "What if Christianity is wrong?" Then someone, I, one of the responses was, "At least if it's wrong, I have chance to enter into like another religion." Because see, I've lived life well, but the more I've come into faith, I'm like, it can't be wrong. There's no other option apart from this. So I think that idea really kept me into just like. This has to work. Um, no matter how difficult it seems, um, there's always that encouragement that God is is still with me. But I think when I talk about community, you know, there's this verse where, like, uh, in First John, where he, he says, like, you can't say that you love God whom you can't see if you can't love your brother who you see. And I think God, in His own providence and and wisdom. He, makes sure that through community his love is expressed uh because there are, there are seasons i know someone if if you're bereaved you'll need a hug and and god because his spirit he may not be there to like provide that physical hug you'll need a word of encouragement you need just someone to sit and be present and 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 when i think about like seeing the love of god that's what i think that he has expressed his love for me through people first through his son dying but through people who believe in in that so i think that's what what even to now i've seen that um there are people who care there are people who check up there are people who uh take their time to listen to sit down with you and 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 and, and i think that for me is is just the evidence of god's god's love um through his his people Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, it's a very powerful mm-hmm. story, and I think it also just challenges Christians mm-hmm. to make sure that you reach out to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, people might be going through different mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. in their life, mm-hmm. and they might be being strong. And mm-hmm. God might be, you know, sometimes God can like touch your heart to talk to somebody mm-hmm. or to reach out to them. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we should heed that uh, mm-hmm. call from mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm and uh, just reach out to our brothers in Christ mm. and our sisters because mm. we might be the one God is sending to mm. reach out mm. to that person mm. Mm. and uh, I think that's a very powerful story thank mm. you for sharing mm. the, that part of your life mm. maybe we can go to now how you transition to now full pastoral job mm. at Baptist so, yeah. so see, I, I finish, finished school um, so so I I was convinced that I'm either applying because I didn't I, by then I didn't know a, a lot of churches because yeah. obviously Bapu has yeah. been my own. So I knew like Chapel, I knew Mamlaka, I knew Sita. Um, so I was like, because Bapu is not taking any any interns, mm-hmm. I'll apply to like Chapel. So I had a friend who was in Chapel, and I was like, I'd mentioned this to them, and they're like, they had sent me some some forms. So. As as preparing my mind to like not transition to 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 chapel, so I remember one day I'd come for for like worship, uh, worship the the Thursday prayer service. So I'd come for practice, and and the senior pastor called me to his office and was like, 
do you know like like we are taking in terms and i was like oh i, I didn't know and the deadline was the the friday the next day so it was thursday next day was the deadline so it's like hey we'll try try and apply so i remember i finished the practice went immediately applied sent the things to the hr and at that particular time i was, I was still quote volunteering at the hospital because i'd finished my tenure and as like I, was, I felt like this i was so sure this was not the place for me so i was, I was ready to like just leave the job I uh, said so had communications with the person in charge and just told them I'm just here for like 2 weeks uh and and if you want anything I'll finish them but in 2 weeks uh, I'm 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 leaving and and the, the the director was thinking about like offering me a job and I was like me to be honest I don't want to work here in any capacity so applied then now uh I feel like a week later received confirmation that I had gotten I'm going to do a first interview did the first interview did the second interview then now uh, now got into ministry um now I was posted to MBC Kibera in 2022 uh, as an intern and, and I think one of the things I I I sit down and now reflect back I think God is is amazing in how he he does things. So there's there's a there's a theological concept it's called providence. And providence would mean like God is putting or, or in a simple term like putting us in spaces as he orchestrates his his plan for 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 eternity. So the story of Joseph and how at the end he speaks of like you meant it so he's telling his brothers because his brothers like our father has died this guy is going to kill us mm-hmm. so he said like whatever you're doing you meant it for evil but god meant it for good to save our people for himself so joseph was put in in egypt so that god may save the 70 people from famine but also eventually that he may release the 2 million people that come out of him. so so that's like the providence of god and and i look back in, especially in ministry that if i were to graduate in 2019 perhaps i wouldn't be in ministry because i have got gone directly to the job market the experiences that happened between 2019 and 2020 2021 that allowed for this to be the eventual uh, end end process and and i think for the encouragement i think for the christian i think sometimes we view lightly our suffering mm-hmm. or we view lightly the difficult seasons of our lives not knowing what they look like in in God's eternal okay. eternal plan um and i don't want to say that oh at the end of the day we're going to be rich because because mm-hmm. that is not god's um that's not what the word of god says but like whatever god has ha- has planned he will make it come pass in whatever season in whatever difficult or joyous season and i think that that allows me a lot of encouragement but also a lot of joy in what he prepares uh, next cause there's a, there's a realization that is in some like the way paul he says like the present sufferings cannot be compared to the joy that is to come so heaven is way more glorious in terms of what he's preparing me through this earth um and i think this journey even to the to reaching pastoral ministry is is god's god's work and and i think one of the things i've noticed is even there are there are like stories in my life that sometimes i feel ashamed of sharing or like a difficult in terms of that experience that enrich this pastoral experience mm-hmm. um as we are talking with with you about like teenagers there's a way i can understand a teenager a bit different because of what happened in my teen teen life there's a way i can understand a college a much different because of what happened in that season when i was uh, in university uh, that god has allowed and uh, and i think he shapes us for the next season so that we are not limited in our ability to perform um, not saying that past the pastoral ministry is just wavy like a smooth road it has its challenges um 
Um, you're just because you're dealing with people's souls and, and, and you're dealing with yourself being a sinful individual. Mm. Uh, I think some people assume now because you're a pastor, you're the best being in the world, but you, you're still battling your sin, you're still killing your sin daily mm. as they are. Um, and, and you're still trying also to help other people do it daily and still trying to keep yourself out of the many scandals that we hear of, of pastors. pastors these days. Still trying to be sane in your mind so that you are not forming, not forming your own small cult of, mm -hmm. of people. Uh, but but I've just seen there's, there, there are things God has done in my life mm -hmm. that have helped shape my ideas about ministry. Mm -hmm. That if some of those things were removed, I would have been a very different mm -hmm. individual. Uh, maybe now as we conclude, you can share how is it being a, a pastor mm. as young as you are? Because mm. I think you're one of the youngest pastors mm. around. Mm. So how is it being maybe the fact that you're young, mm. other people who look down upon you, other people mm. who relate to you more mm. because you're young? How is that experience? Like? Look down. Mm. Look down. No one has done it like vividly. Mm. Um, but I think there are challenges, especially in the African context or let me say Kenyan context, mm. people seem to revere you more because you're older. Mm. So there are spaces that sometimes it's challenging to minister because they're like, That's um, um, dog, uh, this young person, what do they have to tell, uh, tell me? Um, but they are, I think what I think about it is it offers me a lot more time to, to like serve the Lord. That's that song that I was saying for recap. I wish I had all the time in the world. I'd give it all to you. Um, if I were to, like, let's say, retire at 65, like 40 years of my life would have been given to ministry. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be time well spent. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that is the joy of, 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 of being. Um, I think the challenges, I think, is just that, that there are spaces that are difficult for me to even if I know, like, uh, you might know something, but because of the nature of who you are, so first, you're young, second, you're unmarried. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, I'm sure Bapu will never give me a sermon to preach about marriage. Even if, like, scripture, mm -hmm. the person who wrote, like, Paul, when he was writing, was a single person, or mm -hmm. Jesus was single, mm -hmm. but... Uh, because of the nature of my condition, there are like limitations on, on how I can reach out. Uh, but also I think Pia, there are some experience issues that sometimes there are people we may not understand each other well. Like uh, someone who's 90, there are experiences that I may not, I may encourage them with a word, but I may not be able to encourage them with like a life experience because their life experience is different. Uh, but some of them, I think some of them are Pass or things that uh, you make for, for yourself. So sometimes I, I may go to places and assume, ah, they are not listening to me because they think I'm young. But no one has said. So, mm. so I think overcoming that until someone says, just assume they are listening to you. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, uh, okay. Obi. Mm. Maybe you can say final remarks to just encourage other people. Mm. Uh, and uh, maybe young people who will be watching this, mm. older people, mm. and share, tell them that, just encourage them whatever they are going through now. Mm. I think I think the the encouragement is just in line with like what what Paul would say, like in considering your present suffering or circumstance. Uh, I think we we don't talk about it as much in church that. It's a, it's a condition that all of us will go through. Uh, being human, we will struggle, we'll face losses, we'll face death, we'll face sickness. Uh, uh, and, and, and sometimes it's easy to feel as though God is eliminated from that situation. Uh, but being reminded that like there's a plan God is working uh, in that situation that will when you gaze your, when you lift your eyes and see him, will help you to walk through that situation. One, one, one of my, a very interesting scripture that I, I think about a lot is, um, he says that his rod and his staff, they comfort me. 
And if you think about that analogy and you imagine how a shepherd functions, like the road is not a road of comfort. It's forbidding you to go in the right direction. And, and the way the psalmist thinks about it is like, even when the, there's beating, even when there is pain, there is comfort because the pain is from the Lord. Uh, David, when, when his son dies, uh, uh, no, no, when, when, when he does the census and God is about to punish him, he gives him like options. But, but he says like he'd rather receive punishment from the Lord because he knows the Lord is merciful than from men. And, and I think the, the encouragement always is in whatever situation you find yourself, trust in who God is. Uh, he's merciful, he's present, uh, but also trust that his will is, is, is for our benefit. So regardless of the difficult situation, he's still working for the benefit of his people. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd finish with Romans 8.32, which says that he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, together with him, uh, give us, graciously give us everything? And that, that, that shows the, the nature of the love of God, that number one, he, he killed Jesus on the cross. So if he did everything to the son he loved so much, how will he not also care for his children? So trusting in that and, and living in that truth, I think helps you survive better than, than any affirmations for the, cause the teenagers, any affirmations you would speak to yourself in the mirror. Uh, that scripture uh, affirms everything uh, for, for life. Yeah.